Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com. Um, just a relatively quick video blog of sorts. Um, today's Friday, uh, June 17th. My birthday's in a few days. The new Foles album came out, as I mentioned in the last, uh, the last video. But um, I got kind of... Uh, well, there have been two things that have come up. I got back in touch with a friend of mine who... Um, I used to talk to regularly. She's from Brazil, but she now lives in Denmark. It's kind of a neat. I mean, I'm not going to give names. Her name is Annie, but I'm not going to give a lot of names. She might be on, like, YouTube and stuff like that. But it's interesting. So, it's weird what happened, though. I was just talking to her about some of the music. Because we used to, we met through being, like, Dream Theater fans. And, um, Kevin Moore, of course. And, interesting enough, Kevin Moore now got his medical degree or his PhD, actually, he must have, um, he only went to arts college originally, but Kevin Moore, the original keyboard player from Dream Theater, Majesty, and then Dream Theater, and then Chroma Key, OSI, with Jim Matheos and everything like that, um, he went to medical school and got his PhD, his doctorate, I guess it was in psych, psych psychiatry, and he's now a pra licensed practicing psychiatrist, I'm not mistaken, not psychologist, practicing in North Dakota, which being from Twin Cities here, St. Paul area, um, not the same neighborhood, not the same area exactly, but it's not that far, and potentially he may actually do some practicing in the Twin Cities here at some point. I don't know, it's just interesting, small world of sorts, but um, that was made light, it was mentioned on some of the message boards, of, I don't know, a few months back, but um, good for him in some ways. I don't know if that means his music output and work he does is going to pretty much be no more, I don't know, or even playing live or whatever, but never got to see him live, unfortunately, um, would have liked to have, but, so, the other thing that tied to my friend Annie that, um, I found out about, uh, she went to the Marillion weekend, and she moved to Denmark, and got her, she's working in Denmark now, she told me, but, um, she went to the Merlin weekend in Sweden, and I'm super jealous. And you know, I know she was a Merlin fan. I can understand why she'd want to go. Um, and she, maybe she never, she never saw them in Brazil anyway. Said it was fantastic and everything. Nathan on Shuffle did a reaction to the title track to the, the debut album script for Jester Cheer, and that's how I saw her comment. But, but she told me about how she has become a huge fan of Gavin Castleton. Um, who more, more recently was part of the Deer Hunter and then has departed and gone back to being a basically a solo artist. And even when he was with the Deer Hunter, he released solo music. Previous to the Deer Hunter, he was with a couple different bands, also along with doing a lot of solo music. His album Home, I have, I think it's probably in a box somewhere, but um, was sort of hyped up a little bit in the quote, unquote, indie, independent scene, indie rock scene, when it came out in 2009. I... I, I remember kind of hoping I was going to like it more than I did, but I had enjoyed before that album came out his band Ebu Gogo and then his band Groovus Malt. Um, and I haven't revisited those albums. They both were instrumental bands, if I'm not mistaken. Ebu Gogo was for sure. It was like sort of like jazz metal, like video game jazz metal. It was, it was fun stuff. Um, but and then Groovus Malt was also kind of jazz fusion y of sorts. Um, I got the sense that Ebu Gogo was like him, like one of the person, whereas Groovus Malt was like a full band, but I can't remember. Um, I haven't listened to them in a while. I remember when he joined the Deer Hunter, I revisited some of that music, but he's done a lot of other kind of stuff. He's very much of a, an eclectic, multi-instrumental, multi-instrumentalist who sings and multi-genres, a little bit like Kevin Gilbert or another maybe good comparison, two comparisons, Self, of course, or Fiacra. Because uh, he, he does his share of, like, sort of hip-hop, but sort of in a artsy, progressive way in, of sorts. But a lot of electronic stuff, electronic beats. He's 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 a kind of all, all over the place. And, you know, I haven't listened to even half his music. He's not, like, super, super prolific, but he has a reasonable number of solo records. Now, I guess a Annie was telling me one of his records isn't on uh, Bandcamp anymore. It was from 2020. It was pulled, but... Um, Anyway, I, should, I was listening to one of his records, the one she was loving so much, she was praising that. I should pull it up. But um, this, this, the, the, the whole point I was trying to make about him, I, I discovered this the other night, is um, I first found out about him, for the most part, from memory. Um, let me find something here. 
a bullet, a lever, and a key. That's the one that Annie was telling me. That's sort of, it came out and maybe that was the one from 2020. But there's one album that's not even listed. No, it was 2000. Was that 2007? Oh, that was way back. So that was like post Abu Gogo, pre home, maybe. I don't know. It's a pretty short record, but it's it's kind of the titles are like 2054, 2045, 2038, 2000, different years throughout the, like a 50 year span. So 53 year span or whatever. But I'll have to revisit. I mean, it was interesting. I could see why my friend was really, really, this album may have meant a lot to her. It's pretty short. It's probably only like half an hour long. But um, the narrative prog hop concept record. I see like prog hop. You think about progressive rock and hip hop. Fiacra is one of the first names that come to mind. You could also put Self, but Self isn't necessarily prog rock, but he uses some hip-hop elements, sort of like Beck, but also with the power pop and um, artsy progressive elements, just with a lot of like Prince elements and anyway. So I was just talking, trying to remember other people that really enjoyed Gavin Castleton's music, and um, a lot of them were, from my memory, were a lot of the people that were the Deer Hunter fans. But not so much. I mean, I remember that when he joined the band, he was part of, like, Happy Body, Slow Brain, and became Rare Futures. I have one of their hoodies, actually. Nice. Um, I think I bought that when I bought the record. Yeah. I remember Casey Crescenzo talking about it. And I guess Casey Crescenzo, since he joined, he joined the Deer Hunter, played on one of the, his solo records. The one that might have been actually pulled from Bandcamp that was up and got pulled, but um, but he left. But So, I mean, getting at the people that knew his music and I was trying to tell her about, and one of them was this guy named Shane. Um, and the story is with Shane is I he talked about him and a whole bunch of music. And his, he, was, he wrote for a blog called Medium of Music that isn't up online anymore, unfortunately. It was a couple, it was him and a couple other people. It was like a shared music blog. The big thing was Shane wrote an entry in 2005 at the end of the year, the Albums of the Year thing, and I can't remember if it was linked. It was both the Incubus View message board and maybe even on the Traversing message board, the Dredge fans, because he was a member of both, although he didn't really post on Traversing that much. But he posted it. He, he, he posted a lot on Incubus, and I remember he shared his entry on his Albums of the Year in 2005 on Traversing. And it was just this massive list, but the interesting thing about it was the writing was really good, and the, a lot of the bands he talked about were right were really were looking for stuff that I was looking for, sort of the post Radiohead, the Mars Volta, that kind of that style, Dredge kind of music. All, although some of the bands I came to enjoy around that time we came out music weren't on his list, but some of them were like Clint 1918 is one of the ones I always think of. Clint 1918, he was a huge Catasfly fan, um, Coheed. Um, he, Catatonia is another band I remember who liked, but I mean they're not quite in that kind of mold that that scene. But um, I'm trying to remember what else. But I, I would almost pay money now to like find maybe it's on the Wayback Machine his his blog entry from that year. And he did a couple of them the years after that too. That that initial one was just super long. It was like 130 albums, and I probably owe at least. 15 bands at least to knowing just from his en entry and then he wrote for media music the albums of the year he did for a couple of years and I always enjoyed reading because his writing was really good well unfortunately I was, I'd friend him on Facebook he was part of another message board like a private one called M forums which isn't a writing board there's a Facebook group but um he he was in there posting I remember him saying it's like well we might as well talk to Kyle he's you know if I have any new music I might as well think Kyle will probably mention it but I still think he was passionate about music, but I think his time and priorities got different. He got, I don't know if he was, he got married at some point, and then he had kids. But um, I'm speaking about him in, in the past tense because what I'm saying is I found out he's not around anymore. He um, passed away. He passed away a while ago. It wasn't just like earlier this year. It was in 2018. A little bit like with the James Bickers thing, which I didn't find out about James Bickers dying until like almost a year after it happened. I used to follow James Bickers on Twitter. I knew him previously for the work with Sea Tranquility and Progression Magazine. Um, and I met him at the Prague Party with Safe Festival in 2001. But, um, you know, it's happened a few times where you, you know certain people. I, a friend of my parents, I just found out, passed away like a year ago. Uh, but she was older, at least, I guess. But that doesn't downplay the fact it's, it's weird to hear that she's not around. I had a cousin that died, was it last year? Was it last year? 2020, actually. She had cancer, but he was only 37, Shane. It just, um, 
he was known as like Spectre 1982. So I haven't done like Google searches trying to find everything that he he did out there. I, but um, he was just he was a really passionate, knowledgeable, talented uh, music fan slash writer. But I guess he had a lot of other. He was like a chemical engineer. It's maybe his kids will sort of pick it up. There's a a user I knew on the Dream Theater slash Five Eight forums years ago um, that passed away. His screen name was his name was Mark, and I know like his son because he had a son a year or two ago came onto the message board asking about him. It's just weird. Maybe maybe Shane's children will at some point, you know, reach out and find you know, some of his, their late father's, uh, you know, passions and hobbies and that kind of stuff with music. And, um, you know, I didn't talk to him that much, but I did friend him. And I, you know, I remember I just was sort of just from afar, just paying attention to him and I'd make a comment, but, um, I, I kind of now <laughs> thinking about it, cause I wonder what, the, whatever had happened to him. Cause I didn't talk to him cause I po he posted in the M forum back in 2015, 2016, 2017 on Facebook. And it's like, well, what happened? What happened to that guy? I don't see him posting anything. I wonder what he's been listening to. And it's been, you know, it was the end of 2018 when he, I guess, he passed away. It's from New Jersey, I guess. So, uh, rest in peace, Shane. Um, you're uh, along with James Vickers and some others. You know, I can't uh, forget your sort of inspiration you've had on me as a, just a music fan and trying to write some, trying to do content journalism of sort, even if it's just purely you know, uh, as, an, as just an amateur, um, pro bono kind of thing. Um, and this kind of music, cause he was not necessarily purely, but he definitely enjoyed the sort of 21st century alternative progressive rock of a sort, you know? Um, and, um, he's he not the only one, you know, a lot of the other people we know that I know, but, um, he's definitely one of them. So, Rest in peace, Shane. I'm um, really sorry to learn about this so, a few years later, too. Just to sorry to learn that you're gone, but um, won't be forgotten for sure. So, anyway, um, hope everyone's doing well, staying cool, having a good upcoming weekend for Father's Day. Um, I'm still battling mouse. I have to have my car looked at and everything. So, <laughs> and my birthday's on Monday. But um, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for streaming. Thank you for. Um, Subscribing. I'll try to do some videos next week if I can. I'll see you next time.